Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone joining in from around the world. Welcome to another episode of Identity in 15, powered by WSO2 Identity Server. And our topic today is password policies. So before we dive into, into our topic at hand, I'd like to mention a few things. First about myself, I am Ashin De Silva, a software engineer for IAM WSO2. If you are new to this video series, WSO2 Identity Server is an open source IAM provider. Uh, you can just simply go to the website, download and try this out. So let's get started. What is a password policy? A password policy is a set of rules that enforces users to create strong passwords. So having a strong password is important to uh, protect your identity and resources online. And it would also create, uh, make a hacker's life much harder if, when they try to uh, steal your identity by guessing your password. Um, there are several password policies uh, that, uh, that could be enforced using WSO2 Identity Server. The minimum password length, the maximum password length, uh, the minimum number of lowercase alphabetical characters, minimum number of uppercase alphabetical characters, minimum number of numeric characters, and then there's the minimum number of special characters from a specified list. For example, there's uh, the exclamation mark, the at sign, the hash, dollar, etc. So with the addition of each of these policies, the password would get progressively stronger. So according to the level of password strength that is required, you can choose which of these policies that you'd want to apply. So now let's see how uh, we work with password policies in the identity server. In this demo, I'm going to demonstrate how to enable password policies, uh, set the required password policies and how they work. So let's get started. So for this demonstration, I'll be using um, the identity server version 5.10. And I'm going to log into the management console, head over to identity providers, the resident. And in the resident identity provider, you should uh, expand the password policy section and go to password patterns. Let's enable this feature. And uh, down below, you can see the password policies, as I mentioned before. Uh, there's a minimum password length, which is six by Hi guys, sorry, I'm back, uh, small technical issue. So back to where I was, uh, the password policy pattern. Uh, this part checks for, uh, checks whether any digit, numeric digit is in the password. This. Yeah, this section would check whether any lowercase characters are there. And this would check for any uppercase characters and this would check for any special characters being given in this list. And this is again another check for length, uh, which would uh, then again be overridden by the values given here. And finally, there's the password error message, policy error message. So this is the password, uh, the error message that will be displayed if a user violates the enforced policies. So let's go ahead and click update. And to test this out, I'm going to use the user portal. So I'm going to create an account. In order to create an account, uh, user self-registration has to be uh, enabled in the resident identity provider. So let's go ahead and create a new username. Let's just fill the basic required attributes. And to demonstrate, I'm just going to use a very simple password, weak password, uh, consisting of only lowercase letters. Yeah, so that's done. Let's go ahead and click register. Yeah, so it gives the error message that uh, we validated the password policy and that the password we enter should adhere to uh, these rules given here. 
So now let's go ahead and uh, enter a correct password that fits all the policies. So I'm going to use um, uppercase A, lowercase A S D F, and for a special character, say the at sign and numerics uh, one, two, three. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, so now the user registration has been successful. The password has been accepted uh, because it adheres to the password policies that we enforced. Okay. Um, in addition, I'd like to also mention that uh, in addition to this, uh, the tenant wise password policy validation that I just demonstrated, uh, WSO2 identity server also allows um, to validate pa passwords at the user store level. So if you uh, just as an example, uh, if I add a user store and head over to this optional tab here, you can see this password regex here again. And uh, you can enter another uh, regular expression uh, to fit your password policies if it is required. So you have the choice to select either user store wise password policy validation or the tenant wise password policy validation. Uh, you can choose one or the other. So in, in my case, since I use this resident IDP tenant wise password policy validation, I, I have just uh, entered a simple uh, regex here that would simply accept any password that have been already validated by the uh, uh, the tenant wise password validator. So if I'm to use the user store level password validator, I have to use the complex, uh, the, all the password required password policies here and enter a, a simple uh, regex a password policy at uh, the resident identity provider. Okay, so that's a bit about password policies. Uh, moving on. Uh, next up is password history. So password history is uh, a special password policy that prevents users from reusing old passwords. So we can configure the identity server to uh, remember a specified number of passwords and uh, it will prevent users from reusing those uh, passwords, it will actually uh, prevent the user from re-entering those passwords and uh, up to uh, those specific number of times. So, yeah. Yeah, so when this is enforced, it would uh, make sure that the user always enters a new password, thus making your identity more secure with time, uh, since uh, no old passwords will be reused. So let's head, head back over to our demo and see how this works. back to the resident identity provider, password policies, password history, and let's enable this feature here. And uh, the password history validation count is already given as five by default. Let's go ahead and click update. Yeah, so uh, to, uh, to see how this works, let's uh, head back over to the user portal. And I'm going to log in as an existing user. Uh, let's change our password, head over to security, change your password. And I'm going to enter my current password here. As you can see, it's uh, this one. And uh, it, it, it would anyway uh, not allow you to enter the same password again. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to change this once and retry again with uh, this password. Password uh, change has been successful there. Um, let's log back in and change, try to change our password to our previous password. Yeah, so let's submit. And yeah, it won't allow you to use the user password. It will give you an error message. So, so that, uh, that's it about a password policies with WSO2 Identity Server. You can just try this out in less than 15 minutes. And now it's time for some questions. Uh, let's see over here if you've, got, if you've got any questions. 
So if you guys have any questions, please uh, post them down in the uh, comments below. Okay, uh, we are not getting any questions as of now. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask uh, your questions on our Slack channel. Uh, also follow us on Twitter, uh, on Twitter and also join our Slack channel. Our links will be uh, given down in the description below. Um, and another thing I'd like to mention is our, our new version, the 5.11, Identity Server 5.11 will be released uh, in the near future. Please check out our, pro our product page and uh, try it out once it has been released. And another thing, uh, uh, the IAM community call will be happening um, this Thursday at 11, IS, 11 a.m. IST. Uh, please make sure to join us and uh, check out our new content as well. So that's it, everyone. Have a good day or good night. Let's meet again with another episode like this. And in the meantime, please uh, try this out and uh, please leave us your feedback down below. Thank you.